Now let's look at the result in the Onuma system. In the Onuma system, we have the GIS layers that came in from the uh, Oklahoma City GIS um, maps. They're sitting on a server, so they're accessible to everybody um, in the BIM storm. And you can do things like turn, th turn layers on and off. So for example, we can turn the buildings off and turn the roadways off and see where the parks are or leave just the streets on. Layered on top of that now, what we did is we actually started to uh, reference uh, live the uh, projects from the different teams um, that were working in the BIM storm. So you see these buildings down here. These are actually coming in live reference from those teams, uh, uh, schemes and projects. In other words, if these projects were updated, we'd actually see um, the buildings change shape, for example. We have uh, taken the... Um, the team uh, projects and actually layered them into um, sites and we've decided to actually um, there are four uh, four projects here from the different team members Amy uh, Shell and Cody Wheeler for example have a project here on the um, Walker site and then we place the other four projects uh, directly above them one two three four up here and then the other team uh, has their uh, master planning project on the right side here We've also inserted uh, the other um, 15 projects that came in from the different teams uh, scattered throughout the site. And we still have some of the prototypical buildings uh, layered in as well. So this is the, uh, um, the structure that we're using. And from this structure, we can do many different variations very quickly. For example, if we decide that we really want to move uh, a project from uh, one site to another site, it's simply a matter of uh, grabbing it and uh, moving it to, to another site like this, or uh, bringing in another another building from another team uh, uh, that might have designed a different option for that site. So this this way is really quick. One can quickly uh, analyze different options uh, using the, uh, the input that was generated by the um, participants in the BIM storm. From these designs now, um, we can actually, um, let's turn off some of the GIS layers and just look strictly at, at uh, the, the projects that came from F F and BS, for example, is on the right side here. Uh, if we click on the report button, we can generate live reports. This is a live report, an aggregation of all the uh, areas of the site and the cost, uh, the total acreage, 358 acres. As the buildings are added, uh, the total building areas would, would get updated here. We have classified the buildings by omni class facility type, so for example, residential units, etc. So you get this. Um, live pie chart here and there's also a roll-up of util estimated utility usage electrical use and water use for example and operations and maintenance cost these numbers can be adjusted uh, quite a bit in the settings we left them as default right now another report is a building comparison these are all the buildings each column is a building so you'll see the name of the building and the site and the estimated construction cost and the um, details about the uh, energy use per building now. And uh, occupancy, for example, shows the residential number of residential units, um, utility summary, and operations maintenance cost. A lot of these buildings came in from different teams. So some, some of the data is not 100% complete, but at least you have a starting point. Uh, for example, for, for whatever reason, this particular building did not have the energy data entered in it, so it's not actually reporting energy use. But most of the submitted projects actually have the default values or entered values from the teams that are generating energy use per building now. So you can either roll it up at the whole city level or drill down to an individual building. And if the settings are changed, um, these uh, summaries would also get automatically changed. Another view is to look at some of the other uh, reports. Um, for example, you can actually start looking at um, reports about uh, cost summary. This is a, a project by project report. It just scrolls down. So there's many different outputs, essentially taking the data from the projects and uh, automatically generating reports from the, uh, the geometries that were entered into the project. From here, you can do a lot of exporting. So if we go to export, you can export to Google Earth. You can say I export it by uh, building volume and color code it by time-based and include a 4D timeline. And the result of that would look something like this. So in Google Earth now, uh, we have a timeline on the upper left. This is the starting point 2012. If 
we hit the play button in Google Earth, it actually starts going through every year. Red means it's under construction, so here come some buildings under construction. Green means it's completed. Uh, you can see the uh, sequence of construction here, and this can easily be changed in an Excel spreadsheet if one wants to try a different variation of the, uh, the scheme or actually duplicate the scheme and, and uh, test different versions of this. Or you can grab the timeline and, and just uh, zoom over to the part to the year that you're interested in, and then zoom into the uh, uh, the part of the city and see what what the density is going to be like. Each of these elements, if you click on a, a block here, for example, a parcel, it gives you the parcel number B10, B12, and the same thing with the building. So if we look at Amy's uh, Shell and Cody Wheeler's building here, it actually gives us a summary of that building now in Google Earth with the same data we were looking at earlier in the reports in the Onuma system. So these models actually originated in this case, uh, Amy, Shell, and Cody, I believe, started in, in Revit and imported the resulting Revit model into the Onuma system to give a simple view of the data without having to, to know how to use Revit. In this case, it's a Google Earth view of that with the, uh, the data coming out from uh, the Onuma system server. Uh, same thing with the, the roadways. You can actually click on the roadways. Or if you uh, zoom back and say I want to get an overall view of the project, um, you can actually click on the, uh, the site itself. Any part of the site here actually gives us an aggregated view of, again, the 359 acres, the same data we were looking at earlier, but now inside the Google Earth interface. In Google Earth, you can set up different camera views or, or manually um, zoom in and zoom out with your mouse, or I set up a camera view here, for example, it just will fly over to uh, another part of the site to look at a different angle. Um, the point of this this graphic is not to create a, a beautiful rendering for uh, photorealistic rendering, but to have a rendering of the information and the data. So as a team start trying different options from a planning perspective or from a developer's perspective or a city planning perspective, you can start looking at the implications of uh, the scheduling here. And as one can imagine, there's millions and millions of iterations when you start doing different phasing or different density or different buildings, and you would want to to study it from many different angles and see what the options there are, there are from uh, a design perspective, from a real estate and a marketing perspective, for example. Uh, keeping the, the graphics simple like this allows you to rapidly view the complex data that started in the projects. Uh, in many cases, uh, they were starting from Revit, or in some cases, we started from Excel and created these massing models of uh, residential units as prototypes that could be used as a starting point to then take it out into the other building information modeling applications like Revit to do more detailed design. There's no linear process to any of this. The point of the BIM storm here at Oklahoma City was that the resulting buildings that you're seeing here literally were just coming in in the last couple of days. We haven't seen uh, these models appear till very recently, and you saw earlier the more detailed rendering, rendered views and the studies that were done and all the data that was collected to come to this point, but now having them in this format allows you to do a lot of different things. So let's go back to um, look at a, a few um, PowerPoints of this. Um, the Oklahoma City BIM storm started with the um, uh, GIS data in the background. We started mashing up uh, since yesterday the buildings that were coming in from the teams. Uh, we have a year-by-year -year view of the construction that you saw earlier in Google Earth. These are screenshots of that, or you can create output and save the, uh, the graphics for presentation purposes like this. Um, the uh, detailed summary of cost and the utility summary, building-by-building -building reports. And the last one I'd like to show is actually what it looks like live on an iPad. So if we have um, an iPad view like this, Let's actually open up the iPad here and get to some position. There it is. So this is a live view of the iPad. So we're live on the iPad here. And the same data that we saw earlier on the desktop and actually the same models that started from Revit now in a simplified format on an iPad allows many users to access the information without needing to know anything about BIM or the complexities of the tools that were used. So this is a a report from um, one of the projects. Let's go back and look at this project from Eric Medina and Adam LaCours. Or let's look at the project from Amy right 
here. Amy Shell and Cody Wheeler. Get the info button on that. It's giving us a summary of the project from Amy and Cody, the square footage and cost and other attributes that are available from it. We can turn on the satellite view and pull in the, the map uh, from the satellite imagery. Uh, this is a mashup of the building information modeling data, the, the, bit, the satellite views and other, other more detailed information. Let's go inside the building that Amy and Cody worked on and look at some of the upper floors. Let's look at the third floor. And there are all the spaces that originated in the, um, uh, the Revit model. And we can actually select multiple spaces. For example, say let's, we want to do a quick analysis of how many square feet we have on the third floor of these selected spaces. I click the Info button. And there it gives you kind of a summary of those spaces. You can do a lot of other things, like you can actually take a photograph or send a message directly from the iPad. So this, this is used a lot, and there's actually the list of all the people that are involved in the project directly from the database. This, as projects like this get more and more complex, it gets incredibly difficult to figure out who's on the team or who can we communicate with. So for example, if I wanted to, to send a message to, uh, to Mike Bordenaro here, I could say, well, I'm looking at this building. What do you think of it? Take a look. So from the iPad, I'm, I'm typing in messages. I can uh, even uh, take a photograph. I'll just take a photograph of my screen here that we're looking at. Boom, you take a photograph. Say I'm on the site. I'm think, I think this should happen, this part of, this, of the, uh, the plan. And I could send this off, and it gets sent as a, as a mail to Mike Bordenaro, who can then see uh, the discussion we're having about this part of the building. It's, we have the city at our fingertips now because we have this entire plan with all the buildings that were loaded just uh, a few hours ago, uh, accessible live um, in this uh, interface. And we're just showing one variation of this, but we could very rapidly, within about 20 minutes, we can duplicate this entire site, try a different layout, move the buildings around, try different density, delete buildings that don't make sense, and run another report again. So instead of generating static PDFs and static reports like this, just like on the uh, internet when you're making an airline reservation, you have the access to the building data at your fingertips to try different options and come to a better conclusion with the, uh, the available data that you have. So back on the desktop now, same data, same buildings we're looking at, but now on the desktop, if we were to change this on the desktop and we were collaborating with the team and saying, okay, let's try a different uh, layout of the city here, uh, these changes would actually show up immediately in the uh, other interfaces that we were showing earlier. So with that, let's go back to the conclusion of the slide presentation. If there are any questions, um, the iPad, easy access for all, the live data on tablets, and we thank everybody for being involved with the BIMSTORM Oklahoma City. Thank you very much, and signing off, this is Kimon Onuma from Onuma Inc.